Hey there, Editor Carlos here. So just a little note on this week's podcast. We did have a little bit of an audio issue. I tried my best to clean it up as much as possible, but you may notice the audio levels are going to be a little stranger than normal. We seem to have been able to fix the problem, so we should be good to go again for next week. But I tried to keep as much of the conversation as possible since we didn't want to lose it. So enjoy the rest of the podcast, and we'll see you next time. I am Googling CONCACAF to look up the scores. But did I type in CONCACAF? No. Did I type in soccer? No. I typed in pretentious cross-country running, which isn't actually a thing, but Carlos has said it so much that that is now what I type in when I'm Googling soccer. Well done, Carlos. You are listening to episode 12 of the Unnecessary Nonsense Podcast, a podcast of two unqualified idiots rambling on sports topics they likely know nothing about for an indeterminate timeline in a hastily thrown together format. Brought to us this week by Impromptu Press Conference, because that's the way you communicate. Ask Matt hey. Johnson. I'm Carlos Alcazar, and with me as always is my co-host, Dave Turnbull. Yeah, I think, hey, pre- uh, impromptu press conferences, it's the way to go. Listen, my favorite part about that story, and we'll get to more of it in a second, that's why I alluded to it right off the top. You got it, like I said, now you know, Dave. I can change up that beginning. We can be brought to anything, anytime, songs, actions. But that's a form of communication. That's another way. It's true. My uh, That's actually probably my favorite part of the podcast every week is waiting to hear what you come up with as to what's sponsoring us or what we're brought to our lovely listeners to each week. Yes, yes. Well, in this case, we can thank Magic Johnson for the inspiration of that lovely, lovely intro. So right off the top, I'm going to do some shameless plugs because last the last couple of podcasts have steadily had more people listening, but I want to make sure they know where they can find us. So, of course, if you're listening or watching or watching a static picture and hearing our voices, you can see the podcast on YouTube as Unnecessary Nonsense Podcast, but you can also see us on iTunes, Podbean, Spotify, Google Play, or wherever you get your podcasts. That's also an option. We're on Instagram at Unnecessary Podcast, Twitter at Unnecessary underscore pod, and our website is unnecessarypod.podbean.com. You can just see and download all the different podcasts that we've done up until this date. Now what we're going to be talking about, the main topic is actually going to be the Stanley, the NHL Stanley Cup playoffs and kind of our predictions on it. But before we get to the Canadian content of the podcast, we're going to be talking about Antonio Brown can't stay off social media. Magic Johnson discovers another way to communicate by not actually communicating with the people he's supposed to be communicating to. And then we've got a little bit more from John, formerly Johnny Manziel, more AAF drama because, of course, why not? And are you actually going to do the pretentious cross-country running or no? Oh, I'm going to do the pretentious cross-country running. And we're going to find out how deeply ingrained the pretentious cross-country running has gotten into Dave's mind. So that's going to be what the podcast is going to be about. To start off with, let's talk a little bit about Antonio Brown because I can't get enough Antonio Brown. Does this make you wonder, like at this point, if you're the Oakland Raiders, you're going, what the hell was I thinking? The, off, the off-field distractions for this guy are off the charts. Well, I think they should have been thinking about that before they signed the guy. It's not like it was unknown that the guy has a – the man called himself Mr. Big Chest for absolutely no reason. He dyed his hair so that like a piece of it was blue or purple – you know, a blonde mustache. He did a bizarre interview that led to absolutely nothing. He tried to throw his entire team under bus repeatedly. He did everything he could to get thrown out of there. He finally got what he wanted, and then he's still taking pot shots at the team. It's like, the, give it a rest. The man, the man. So his latest is now this feud with Juju Smith Schuster. Yes. So my favorite part about this feud is it's basically a one-sided feud in the sense that one guy is feuding and the other guy is just like, can we all just be friends? Not really, but effectively, that's that's how it's coming off. Do you just miss I, Mr. Is, go ahead. I honestly feel that that actually makes it more entertaining. Yeah, it's right it's, that it's one sided. That it's just Antonio Brown going off, and Juju Smith Schuster is like, meh, whatever. Yeah, at this point, Juju Smith Schuster could probably just reply with dot dot dot, and Antonio Brown could carry this feud just by himself. He'll just keep posting. He's got nothing better to do with his life. My favorite one though was, uh, and it's already made the rounds of mockery, but it's a weekly podcast, so we got to get our shots in here a little bit. But my favorite part was when he his great reply after all of Juju Smith Schuster basically saying like I'm showing you respect blah blah blah. My favorite part was his response being the incredibly malicious and crazy. You know, showing a picture showing a picture of a, a DM from Juju Smith Schuster from back in his college days. Uh, and I'll quote because it's very very profound. What's up, AB? I'm a receiver at the University of Southern California. I appreciate all your work. You're a great man, by the way. He spelled your the wrong way, so that's heinous. That right there is what I'm sure Antonio Brown was referring to. You're a great man on and off the field. Do you have any tips that can help, that can take my game to the next level? Thanks, man. Mic drop. Vicious. And as, as the, per, the person we're reading this tweet from said, 
Is Antonio Brown trying to make Juju Smith-Schuster look good? If so, he's doing a great job. I mentioned to you earlier, it's like my, my favorite part about it is just how much fodder for mockery this brings up. Like on, NFL, on the on the NFL Network, I saw on the um, Good Morning Football, like their early morning uh, variety show that they have on the network. One of the guys was, you know, being facetious, but he was like, "Oh, I know exactly what you know, Antonio Brown. If that didn't work, I know what Antonio Brown was going to bring next. He was gonna he was gonna show video of Juju Smith Schuster building houses for single mothers. It's like, like at this point, I don't I don't think Antonio Brown understands." how the Twitter beef thing works. If you're trying to take somebody down, don't take somebody down that people are already more inclined to like than you and then make yourself look even worse by being like, and also, and actually this is a more pertinent question for me. Why do you still have a DM from a couple of years ago? Why would you take time out of your schedule to even look through your damn phone to find the damn thing? Why, why wouldn't you have deleted it years ago? It's just a waste of time. If nothing else, it's a waste of time. I don't understand it. So that's Antonio Brown. The man needs to lay off social media in some capacity. It's it's getting a little bit ridiculous. Now, the real question, so let's lead off the direct Antonio Brown. Really what that comes down to is, what do you do if you're the Raiders with this guy? You've already you've already agreed to pay him the money. It's not You can boot him out, but what are you going to do with him? I mean, the thing is, I don't think he's necessarily done anything yet that is really causing the Raiders too, too much trouble. You knew he was going to be somewhat of a problem off the field because that's just who he is. So I think you hope that you get – I mean, how long's the deal? Do you know? It was an extension. Tell you what, talk for a second and let me just try to look that up. But I'm thinking if you get a couple of good years out of this guy where he's maybe taking your team to the next level, which is obviously what you're hoping that's going to happen if you are the Oakland Raiders, and if you get that out of him, you know, a few productive seasons, then maybe you're like, you know what, we don't really care. If he can kind of – mildly behave if you will in the in the sense that if he's not going to spout off on twitter too much honestly i wish he would just you know shut up and play the game right if you feel you've got your point to prove against pittsburgh because pittsburgh is wrong you in such a way then just go out there and the best thing he can do for himself and for his career is just play good football yeah so it's a four-year extension on top of what he already had before on the pittsburgh deal so it adds, a, I think it adds a four years to what they already had on there. So let me just see. Worth yeah. 68 million. And it was a basic, it's a five-year deal that runs through 2021. That's the best way to look at it. It runs through 2021. Yeah. So, I mean, if you get, if you can get two good seasons out of him, I consider that productive. I consider that pretty good for the Raiders. Well, I mean, hell, if you get, I mean, I don't think it's going to happen, but if you can get a Super Bowl out of it, then you're laughing. Yeah, I think I think though the the real concern really isn't about this specific case. It's just the man has had so much trouble with social media. Like one of his one of the big things that should have set off alarm bells for Pittsburgh was when he was doing live video from the Steelers locker room while Mike Tomlin was laying into the Patriots, who was going to be their you know prior to a playoff matchup. If you can't control yours in the locker room doing live video during basically a speech where presumably you should be listening to the speech, you know it just shows that. He's a little too attached to the social media persona and not enough on the actual football part. The thing is, he plays well, football well, but I think the point, and Jack Del Rio alluded to this in some comments as well, and a lot of other players and things, a lot of people have come out and just basically called him out for this nonsense. But the truth is this. He's fine as a Raider as long as he continues to produce, but if he gets hurt, if his numbers start to drop off. And the thing is, Derek Carr is not Ben Roethlisberger. For whatever you can say about Ben Roethlisberger, he's not the same guy. So if his numbers yeah. start to drop off, guess who we're going to look at, Mr. Big Chest? Well, exactly, right? I mean, you know, you want more money. You want it, you're getting what you want. You agreed to go to Oakland, so he needs to step up and play. Yeah, he's going to have to keep producing his numbers because otherwise it's just not going to work. So No, and they're not going to hesitate to get rid of him if he's that much. If he's a distraction and he's not performing, I mean, they're going to eat the money. It sucks, but see you later. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how long he manages to last in that scenario with the way they're set up because I don't think Oakland's really primed to do anything good this year either. So we'll see how that plays out. So that is your Antonio Brown fix because apparently the man can't stay out of the media even even when, even when during the offseason. So now let's talk about another man. So like I said, uh, just to go back a little bit, I really wanted to talk, spend an extended period of time talking about the Aaron Rodgers-Mike McCarthy relationship based off a Bleacher, you know, Bleacher Report article. But it really wasn't worthy of a big, long explanation or discussion after we have Antonio Brown. And now my personal favorite of this week, the one that was the mic drop moment of the week for me, Magic Johnson resigns as, ba- as president of basketball operations of the Los Angeles Lakers. Your thoughts? Why? <laughs> my thoughts are, 
I, I mean, I think I agree with some of the comments that I've heard of it. You know, he was never really all in with it. So it, it, I don't think it's really that big of a loss. The thing that I, I think is crazy is that it's just he didn't tell anybody. He just did the press conference and was like, oh, yeah, I'm out of here. You know, and that's not a great way to conduct yourself in any kind of business. Right. Like, I don't think his relationship was that bad with with uh, was it Genie Bus, the owners? I don't think his relationship was that bad. I don't know. Maybe he's just deciding now that he's wants to focus more time on his going to Dodger games. When this, something like this happens, what's fun about it is that, and I really considered doing a pot extra, but I, work basically had me buried. And this is basically where I get to take out some of my aggression because I'm extra ornery this, uh, this week based on a lot of the nonsense. But I really wanted to record something, even though basketball is not traditionally my lane, because I absolutely love the way this whole press conference thing went. It was rambling nonsense. It was like, I love Jeannie, and I didn't want to hurt our relationship, but I didn't tell her. But at the same time, what I enjoyed was, um, I think on Undisputed, uh, one of the guys on there, and if I can find the name, I'll put it somewhere in the description or whatever, but he posited a different theory. His whole thing was that Jeannie Buss said it. Once Jeannie Buss became comfortable with the idea that it wasn't going to work, she basically wanted to get rid of Magic Johnson, but also not kind of hurt the relationship. So she put him in a position where he would be so frustrated that he would leave. Basically, huh? they're all like playing each other. Um, yeah, I mean, that's quite possible. Yeah, and it, it, that, that would be even funnier given the way this is all played out. But at, the end result is as far as you're – if you're the Los Angeles Lakers or a fan in particular of the Los Angeles Lakers, you can't be happy about any of this because it's – it means it's dysfunctional from the top down. The reality is that Jeannie Buss won a power struggle with her own brothers to get control of the franchise after her brothers had almost run the thing into the ground. And then she basically put Magic Johnson in that position to try to stabilize things. And the whole idea was we'll get LeBron James, we'll get some more free agents, we'll rebuild the team, we'll rebuild Showtime. But at the same time, they're running this like this, they're running this big corporation a very big brand name in basketball. The LA Lakers have a cachet, but they're running it like a mom and pop thing where it's like, we, we hire people that are our friends or family or friends of family, or it's instead of just looking for the best person for the job, it, it again goes back to just because you're a good business person doesn't mean you're a good sports business person. And we alluded to that last week when we were making fun of Tom Dundon for his idiocy. And there's a little bit more on that this week, and I'll, I'll add a couple of points to that a little after. But the thing is, again, Magic Johnson was a great basketball player. He might have a good mind for basketball, but that doesn't necessarily translate into being a good basketball executive because being the president of basketball operations entails a lot of your time, a lot of energy. You basically have to travel all over to do basically scouting, to talk to people constantly. And while he may enjoy the social aspects of it, I don't think Magic Johnson had any... What he alluded to in his own press conference is, I'll be happier being Magic Johnson. And it's like, well, that's great. But then you shouldn't have taken the job in the first place. I don't care who asks you. Yeah, I think I think that's fair. And I think this may also – it may hurt the Lakers in a different way. And I'm not sure because you never know when, with signing free agents because it, it's the Lakers. They are the Lakers. And that's – as you say, it, it still carries cachet. But honestly, right now – I don't think with the players it does anymore. It, no, it's, but it's cachet, well, it's a brand. that's my point. Yeah. Right now the Lakers are a clusterfuck. Right, and and we saw how they were doing okay, and we, I mean, and none of us, I think, really expected them to go to the next level this year. But there was a talk right when um, Anthony Davis requested to be traded from the New Orleans Pelicans that oh, well, there's a lot of talk about him going to the Lakers, and they were, I, I don't know if they were in a playoff position at that point in time, but they, if they weren't, they were close. Right around okay, fourth, well, where they were fourth around Christmas time. So I don't remember. Well, there you go, right? I mean, I know at some point in the season they were definitely there, right? And then that happened, and then AD didn't come, and then it went off a cliff. Yeah. Part of, part of it is, and I'll interject a little bit in here, part of the problem was, now, now forgive us if I don't have the timing right. I know the Christmas thing, they were around fourth. This would have been around the time LeBron James got hurt. And then he was down for a bunch of games. And that's one thing. And then I don't remember the timeline of the Anthony Davis thing specifically. But regardless, it doesn't matter. That season was sliding the wrong way when he got hurt. And then the Anthony Davis thing basically put the nail in the coffin and really drove it into the ground. But the truth is, if the organization itself is stable, because what you have is you have Magic Johnson who really didn't seem committed or fully interested in doing everything you needed to do. And then you had kind of a power struggle with him and uh, Rob Palenka as the general manager. And Rob Palenka has a lot of stroke there because he used to be the agent of Kobe Bryant. And Kobe Bryant is also a beloved Laker as well. 
So it's like you've got this – again, it comes back to family, quote-unquote. You know, like Kobe is part of the Laker family. And Matt yeah. is part of the Laker family. So you've got one at one uh, you know wing of the Laker family a kind of – you know, trying to do some kind of uh, unsteady truce with another aspect. So, do you fire Rob Palenka and piss off Kobe, or do you t- do you get magic out of the picture, or do you do both? And that and that's kind of what the problem that came in is. As soon as you start doing business with people that you have a close association to, you really have a hard time firing them because the truth is, if the reporter was right, and if this was kind of a convoluted way of Genie Bus of kind of getting rid of Magic Johnson without getting rid of Magic Johnson, that's cool and all. It's very Game of Thronesy of you by finding a way to do it without specifically doing it. But at the same time, you know, what a weird relationship you are in with a lot of folks that you deal with where you can't just tell them, look, it's not working. Why don't you just go? Yeah. And it's, it's a bizarre way of doing business. And then you still got Rob Palenka. And the, thing, and the thing is that from a lot of the reporting that I've seen, people don't like Rob Palenka. So to go to back to your Anthony Davis thing. Even if you are in that, in that spot and you're the Pelicans and you basically have to trade him away now to somebody, the last place in the world you're going to send him to is where he wants to go. If he wants to go to the L.A. Lakers, you're going to be – unless they basically offer you the franchise and a, and a stack of money, they're like, nope, don't care. Yeah. And the other thing that's interesting is with, with the NBA, right, is because of – they have a lot of quirky rules, especially with trades and, and money, right, and salaries and how the salaries pretty much have to line up between the players you've traded. But they have a salary cap. And so it's not like, you know, you can't just offer them anybody. If you're L.A., you can't just offer anybody Bryce Harper money, right? It has to be within the cap. So it's not like you're going to say, okay, you know, I'm going to go L.A. because they can pay me more money than anywhere else. That's not the case, No, but they right? Do there have, are but they so many better slot, options. But they do have max slots available. So within the context of players that are free agents, they can offer – the maximum amount of money allowed for anybody that isn't retaining their own player. The only, the only team, the only p- team that could offer more for a any potential free agent would be the team the player is coming from, like the Supermax and stuff like that. But the LA Lakers have a slot in there to be able to offer as much money as anybody outside of that, so they can max it out whatever the maximum is. All right, but yeah, still, I'm thinking, I don't know if it was me. If it's if it's about anything other than the money, I'm not going to LA. Well, it's going to be interesting because, uh, again, the reporting is fluid right now. It's changing all the time. So now that Magic's out, any whatever idea they had, whatever vision that Magic was involved in is now out of the picture. So you've got Rob Palenka and you've got Jeannie Buss and, you know, Luke Walton was all but gone. But right now, he's not necessarily gone. That's why the Magic Johnson thing actually has a ripple effect on everything else. He basically wanted to get rid of Luke Walton. But now Luke Walton may stay. He may go. Rob Palenka was probably going to be – Magic Johnson probably wanted to get rid of Rob Palenka from what I understand. But now he may stay. He may go. And it's all in flux because now apparently what Jeannie Buss actually wants is Kawhi Leonard. And her whole thing is to Palenka is like, get me Kawhi Leonard and basically you can keep your job and you've got all the power you need. Yeah. And Kawhi Leonard is a California guy too. He is, but he's also a weird dude and he also is smart enough to be looking at the L.A. situation and if he goes, I can go to L.A. and I can go to the Clippers. I don't have to go to the Lakers. I can be in L.A. and go to the other team that has more stable ownership and they've got uh, Jerry West consulting with them. And Jerry West is a smart guy. He's a smart basketball guy. That is more, a more stable situation right now as far as L.A. is concerned. If you were going to go to the stable team right now, it's the Clippers, not the Lakers. Yeah, oh, totally. So it's, it's it creates this weird dynamic where even if a player wants to go to L.A., it's like, yeah, but you got two options to go to L.A. You don't have to go. And they nope. and you still get all the perks of the L.A. lifestyle, yeah, yeah. and you're playing in the same arena. Exactly. So that so that it, it puts a lot of wrenches into this. Magic Johnson gets to extricate himself out. But at the same time, Magic Johnson, like I said, is being a little bit flaky about it because it's like, be a man. Just if you couldn't handle it, you couldn't handle it, so be it. But then you should have gotten yourself out of there later or – sorry, earlier. You basically just kind of backed yourself – voluntarily backed yourself away or sooner. Like you had plenty of, plenty of time and plenty of options to do it. And the other thing is nobody told LeBron, the, supposedly. And if that's true, again, they're like – if you're another player looking at this going like, if you're not going to tell LeBron James, if I sign with you, what am I going to know? Am I going to hear about everything you know, via press conference from somebody else? It's a little bit too much uh, Tom Dundon style 4D chess for me. Let's not even go there. I mean, well, actually, speaking of Tom Dundon, let's talk AAF 
one more, maybe one more time. Who knows? Maybe what will happen in next be, between now and the next podcast. But here's the thing. So the CFL, which is a football league that is in operation, is not allowed to sign players from the AAF, which is a league that is not in operation anymore because the contracts haven't been officially voided yet. Even though the contracts themselves allow them players to sign with the NFL, which right. players have been doing. And honestly, you know what? I mean, I can kind of see why this might have been a thing in the first place, right? Because the idea and for the legitimacy of the AAF was it was supposed to be like a conduit to the NFL. It was the development league, and that's they want to get those players to develop them. Well, if those players now go to the CFL, maybe because, you know, maybe they might get better money. Probably not, but it's possible or a better playing opportunity. Who knows? And then they make the NFL through the CFL. You know, which has happened, doesn't happen, I would it doesn't happen often, but does happen frequently, if that makes any sense, right? That they want to then, okay, well, you're now somewhat in competition with the CFL for players, which you don't want to be. You want to be the league that people are going to, to get to the NFL, which obviously you're not going to be now because you're defunct. But anyway, that's that's what I see as a potential reason for that. But as you said in our, our conversation previous to this, just let the league die. Just let it go at this point. And the thing is, because of the nature of where they are legally right now, it's basically inviting another lawsuit. Because there's already a class action lawsuit that a handful of players have started with the AAF, the parent company, Tom Dunn. And because of the way that the, the argument they're taking, as part of that lawsuit, they've named Tom Dundon and Charlie Ebersole directly, which they can do based on the specific thing they're challenging. Now, the truth is, it may go somewhere, it may go nowhere, but it doesn't matter. The league has opened itself up to this. And another angle, we won't, we won't beat this dead horse too much, but it was a new news story related to the AAF, which is kind of dumb at this point. But the other thing that it creates is this scenario where now you're really left wondering, above all else, what was the point of even closing down operations? Because one of the reports that I've heard, everything is a lot of hearsay, because at the end of the day, we need more solid sources, and unfortunately, we don't have them yet. And it's, it's a fluid thing that ha is going forward. It's a lot like the Laker thing. We'll know more as time goes on and as we get more data. But for now, one of the sources that I saw has cited the fact that, you know, uh, one of the big conspiracy theories was that Dundon closed the league so that he could steal the technology. One of the sources says that one of the earlier investors, MGM, basically invested in the technology side of the business. So theoretically, they have a stake in the technology. So Tom Dundon couldn't run away with it even if he wanted to. So again, what did you spend seventy million for then? Yeah, just for fun. Uh, you, well, apparently, on a vanity project that didn't turn out so well. Yeah, and then you don't even take it to conclusion. But then, if you're going to spend seventy million and you only have two weeks left, just finish the thing. Yeah, that's the thing. It's uh, you 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 put yourself in a situation where you basically just threw the money down the tubes, and for basically no assets because even if you try to cash out some of the assets, a lot of the other investors will come at you, which is what I think is happening now is other stakeholders, players, investors, teams, the staff there, a lot of different ones are starting to come at you now because you basically created this scenario. If you had just gotten to the end of the season and then and then cut and then cut bait at that time, they still would have been upset, but they wouldn't have had a leg to stand on. You could have just yeah. said, oh, we got to the end of the season. So, hey, at least we got there. Yep. It's this kind of, uh, as the world turns, nature of the Alliance of American Football or what's left of it. So the zombie AAF moves on. Talked about a little Magic Johnson, a little bit AF. What do you want to say about our good friend John Menzel? Well, I think I, I find it interesting. I mean, obviously that's his name. Although, you know, John doesn't have as good ring as Johnny. So for you those you don't know, Johnny Menzel or now John Menzel has changed his name, so has which not really. But he's like, now you're gonna call me John. Oh, whatever. You know, as you said, John football doesn't quite have the same ring. But if this is you know, if this is part of his plan to rehabilitate his image for a second or third time i don't i don't really see it going much anywhere it's like okay like the only thing is really if he shows up in the xfl because that's the only other place he's really gonna go and does well then great but until then i've had enough of johnny football john football whatever you want to call him jj football allow me to propose a counter idea that may be able to rehabilitate john manzel's image all right, let's hear it. A social media beef with Antonio Brown. Whatever good he's done in his life, Antonio Brown will expose it. 
If you got this is true. You know what? <laughs> Couldn't we all just go that way? Uh, you know, character assassination. I'm just going to start a Twitter beef with Antonio Brown, and suddenly I'm going to look like the biggest amazing angel you've ever seen. This is what I'm trying to say. Like, I want to start a beef with Antonio Brown. And, and it's at this point, I figure he might even just make up stuff about me. It's like, you know what? Carlos is an angel. He gives money to charity. He builds schools for children. That bastard. And, I, and I'm going to sit there going, yeah, sure. Yeah. Take it. Right? It's like, hey, you know what? You want to make up lies about me, but they're good stuff? Let's hear it. This is you know what? That, that, that John Manziel, the, you know, he builds orphanages and then he runs them himself and he cooks and he cleans and he's got like 50 kids that he's taking care of. In like 20 cities. He helps old what a horrible human street. being. He helps old ladies across the street. You know, he gives to his community. He's an all-around swell guy. You know, he's a big brother. At this rate, I think I'm going to start a Twitter beef with Antonio Brown. I don't have a Twitter account, but I feel it might be worth it. You may as well. No, I think you can do it on Instagram too. Just send him a DM. Antonio, really love your mustache. Best mustache in the world. And then he'll expose you on social media later. Let's do it. Let's make it happen. Done. Beautiful. So I think that covers the main ones. The Magic Johnson one I enjoyed the most. The Jen Menzel one, whatever. Uh, the Antonio Brown one was kind of fun. I, I kind of enjoyed that. I'm gonna. Be, I'm not gonna lie to you. But I think that leaves us with a little bit of time. You know, being that we are in Canada, I think it's time for us to talk about a little bit of. Uh, actually, no. Wait. Before we get to the NHL, I believe. There is some pretentious cross-country running report in our future, is there not? Well, sure. There, there, there didn't have to be, but since you brought it up, I will give you the cross pretentious cross-country running report. But first, please, the intro. This is the pretentious cross-country running report with Dave Turnbull. So, as I had planned, I was going to talk CONCACAF Champions League, which I still am going to. You know, doing your research as you do, I am Googling CONCACAF to look up the scores. But did I type in CONCACAF? No. Did I type in soccer? No. I typed in pretentious cross-country running, which isn't actually a thing, but Carlos has said it so much that that is now what I type in when I'm Googling soccer. Well done, Carlos. <laughs> Applause for you. Listen, that's at least in the top 30 things that I've done. So we have a final set in the CONCACAF Champions League. It is going to be Tigris, which was, wasn't was unexpected. They had a 3-0 aggregate lead going into the second leg of the semifinal. Now, Santos Laguna did actually win the second leg, but they won 3-2, so Tigris takes that 5-3 uh, on aggregate. So they're going through, which is pro and they're probably going to win it, uh, I really think. Now, Sporting Kansas City actually got off to a pretty decent start, which is the MLS team, against Monterey. They scored first, and in the end, lost 5-2, making a total aggregate score of 10-2, which is massively pathetic as an MLS team, but as we said, not unexpected. So this will be the last time you will hear about the CONCACAF Champions League for a while because I don't add another two Mexican teams in the final. I could care less. Shame on you. You should show some more love for Mexican pretentious cross-country running. Viva la Mexico. So there you have it, Carlos. So now I'm ready to turn the page. I'm just going to put a shout out there. I actually finished third in my NCAA pool. So congrats to Virginia for winning it after being the the year after being the first seed, the first number one seed to get knocked out by a 16 seed, you go and win the whole thing as a number one seed. So congrats to Virginia and congrats to Texas Tech for making the final. That's the farthest they've ever gone. And I'll take third. I finished ahead of my brother and a bunch of guys who know a lot about basketball, whereas I know nothing about college hoops. So I'll take my third place. Thank you very much. I did actually watch the the game. That was uh, one of the things that I put on the main television when I was uh, doing my sports watching that evening. Was, was it did it include some hashtag multi screen life as you were watching it? Always. Right now, uh, right now, this time of year, you got to do it. Uh, if you're not into the hashtag multi screen life, you got to get on this, folks. There's too, way too many sports to try to pay attention to just one. It's it's doable, but you're really missing out on some fun stuff. So let's talk about some NHL playoffs. This is Canada that we're recording from. So. The CRTC will be pleased that as part of this, we do have some Canadian content. So do you think, I'm thinking just on the basis of the way we should go this is maybe go like one conference, East or West, all the way to the final and then the other one all the way, like the final. So you, you why don't you start with the West? We'll start with the Dallas-Nashville series and you can go through yours and then I'll go through mine for the same. Does that work? That's fine, yeah. So what I'll do here is I'll talk about the West here first. Real quick disclaimer, we begin each show 
by making abundantly clear that we're idiots. So you should probably not take our glorious analysis too seriously. Also bear in mind that while we do watch hockey in the CIS Canada, I, for one, don't watch it nearly as intently as I once did. So a lot of this is just kind of based on what little bits I have seen, but I'm going with it anyway. We're going to roll into it. I'll do my whole Western bracket, and then we'll get your Western bracket, and then we'll do the East, okay? Sounds like a plan. All right. As Dave already mentioned, we got the Nashville Predators at the Dallas Stars, also known as our rivalry cup. The winner team. I'm going to go with Team PK Subban, so Nashville Predators. I would rather the Stars win now. As we're recording, the Stars are up one nothing in the series, but I'm not allowing that to sway me because I did see the Dallas Stars play hockey this year. They, they kind of just, they were right there in the playoffs in the wild card spot. Not that amazing. Now, Nashville, I don't think is really that great either, to be honest with you, but they're a hell of a lot better than Dallas is. However, caveat, just be aware, like in anything else, when we're talking about the NHL playoffs, a hot goaltender makes all the difference. If, ben, if I get a healthy Ben Bishop who plays well for the entire series, Dallas could totally win the series. No problem. But it's really going to come down to health. I'm going to pick Nashville in that one. Then we've got Winnipeg Jets taking on the St. Louis Blues. I am going to select the Canadian content. I'm going to go with Winnipeg winning over St. Louis. Then we've got the Calgary Flames taking on the Colorado Avalanche. Colorado is the other wild card team. They were, I think they were the last team to make the playoffs in the West. So I'm going to take Calgary to advance to the next round. And that's going to make the rest of this bracket much more interesting as we go along. Lastly, I have the San Jose Sharks against the Vegas Golden Knights. I really wanted to pick Vegas, but I feel like the, the hangover of being to the Stanley Cup final last year, I think that'll be a little too much. San Jose has pretty much one last hurrah in it if it's ever going to take a shot at it with Joe Thornton. So I think they'll squeeze that out and, and advance. Does it ever feel to you, I know you continue, but does it ever feel like every year seems to be the, well, San Jose's got one last hurrah, and it seems to be like, They've been saying that for 10 years. It's really Joe Thornton. It's really going to come down to if they can ever push forward for Joe Thornton. It's, I th- at this point, the players have to feel bad. It's approaching Ray Bork towards the end of his career territory. Joe Thornton might have to just go one other place to take one last run at a cup somewhere. I don't know, I don't know how much longer he wants to play. That's really what it comes down to. So for me, that means uh, second-round matchups, and uh, keep an eye on where I'm going with this here. So that's a second-round matchup for me of Nashville Predators taking on the Winnipeg Jets. So I have the Winnipeg Jets winning that to go to the Western Conference Finals. And then on the other side, I have Calgary taking on San Jose, and the Cinderella season for the San Jose Sharks, which really wasn't a Cinderella season, it was just there. They lose to the Calgary Flames, leaving a Western Conference Finals of the Winnipeg Jets taking on the Calgary Flames, which would make CBC's head explode. It makes my head explode because I'm definitely not predicting that as well. I'll go through mine in a second, but I I would love to watch that matchup. Would that not be hilarious? Would that not be glorious? I would love that, actually. There you go. So, go ahead. Take me through your Western bracket. Oh, aren't you going to pick a, a conference winner? Well, the Stanley Cup final is the last piece. This All right, I get you. I'll do my Stanley Cup matchup at the very end. So, here's the thing, and we've had multiple conversations about this at, at my work, about how good is Pekka Rene. Right, So my thing is, Pekka Rene is an excellent goaltender, but I don't ever think he's going to win Nashville the Cup. I honestly feel if they'd had a, a different goaltender, they would have beat Pittsburgh two years ago. So at some point in time, I feel that Nashville is going to flame out of this. And it could be the first round. I'm quite surprised that Nashville won, or sorry, that Dallas won the first game. It was close, 3-2. I expect you know Nashville to bounce back tonight and make it a series. I'm going to go with Nashville in seven games for that series. But, you know, both teams have good defenses. So, like you said, if Ben Bishop gets hot, I, I mean, if I would not be shocked if Dallas won the series. But I'm going to pick Nashville. I, I think I'm, as a P.K. Subban fan, I think I'm contractually obligated to pick Nashville, at least for the first round. Well, we've already discussed this. You are one order of Putin away from abandoning this man forever. Right, but we're not there yet. Uh, next, next matchup, Winnipeg-St. Louis. I also like Winnipeg. I think... You know, they went pretty far last year. So I think they're going to pretty handily win against St. Louis. I'll give I'll give it uh, Winnipeg in five. So that's my that's my prediction there. I'm going to give – I know we didn't say we were necessarily going to give a ga- number of games in each one, but I'm going to. Uh, Calgary against uh, the Avalanche. A lot of people are talking about Calgary's potential goaltending issues. Uh, I but And I think, yeah, sure, but not yet. So I give Calgary the edge there, and I'll give Calgary in five as well. And then for San Jose-Vegas, as you said, I would also kind of like to see Vegas return. 
But I feel that San Jose's got their number a little bit this year, so I'm going to go San Jose in six for that. And then in our next matchups, Winnipeg-Nashville. I feel this is where Nashville's goaltending woes are going to show up. So I pick Winnipeg to make it to the conference final. But where you're, where we differ here, I think that San Jose is actually going to beat Calgary. That's where, And I feel that the second-round matchup in the West is going to be where the goaltending issues show up. And therefore, I'm predicting a Western Conference final of San Jose versus Winnipeg, crushing the CBC's dreams. This is disgraceful. It's uh, it's utterly it's utterly a shame. We'll never get invited to Hockey Night in Canada now. Let's go over to the Eastern Conference. So we start off with the Tampa Bay Lightning, the President's Trophy winning, and also congratulations to them for tying the record of wins with 62 victories in the NHL regular season, taking on the Columbus Blue Jackets. So for that one, I've got the Tampa Bay Lightning. If they lose in the first round, that would be truly embarrassing. But I think even though they did lose the first game, understood. But I, I think uh, I'm going to take Tampa Bay to win in the first round. Uh, the next one's a little bit more interesting to me because you got the rematch of the Boston Bruins and the Toronto Maple Leafs from a couple of years back. So I, I, if you take the over under on the amount of times that you know when they come when they close in on a clinching game, the amount of times that they'll show replay of Toronto collapsing against Boston in the playoffs a couple of years back, uh, take the over. Whatever the number is, take the over. But I'm going to take the Boston Bruins to win that one. But I, along the same lines, I could see Toronto winning, but I just think there's a couple of holes on that team. So I'm going to take Boston to rebound, and I believe Toronto did win the first game. I think it was 4-1. Yes, to that one. is correct. 4-1. to one. I'm still going to take the Boston Bruins in that matchup. Then we've got the Washington Capitals taking on the Carolina Hurricanes. So not only are the Washington Capitals the defending Stanley Cup champions, so you'd like to see them make at least, you know, get past the first round. Plus, the fact of the matter is the Washington Capitals are still an excellent team. I would expect, for, as a matter of pride, they should push themselves past the first round there. So I've got the Washington Capitals winning that. And then the next one gets kind of interesting because the New York Islanders uh, gave the Pittsburgh Penguins all they can handle in that game one. They ended up winning in overtime. But I'm still going to take the experience of the Pittsburgh Penguins to give us another Washington Capitals-Pittsburgh Penguins matchup. Ooh, yes, nice yes. prediction. Yes, yes. So we can have that in round two. So if we do that, then we're going to have Tampa Bay taking on Boston. In the second round, I'm going to take Tampa to take that to take that matchup to go to the Eastern Conference Finals, and then the Washington Capitals and the Pittsburgh Penguins rematch from last season to go to the Eastern Conference Finals. I'm going to pick Washington to go back to the Eastern Conference Finals against the Tampa Bay Lightning. All right, and that is my Eastern Conference, and we'll get to the Stanley Cup Final in a second. All right, uh, so first of all, I don't have much more to say on the Tampa Bay Columbus series, uh, even though Columbus won the first game. I think Tampa Bay is vastly superior. I don't think they're going to win four straight now, so I'll take Tampa Bay in six. Boston, Toronto, if you'd asked me a week ago, I would have picked Boston. But I saw enough in the first game in the series that I like what Toronto's done. They obviously are a great team. I mean, they've played each other close throughout the season. So I'm going to take Toronto Maple Leafs, which part which kills part of my soul. But uh, I'm going to pick them to beat Boston in six. Uh, in the... We hate Tom Dundon because he screwed over the AAF um, series. I'm picking the Washington Capitals in four games to sweep Carolina because screw you, Tom Dundon. You no hockey say, analysis yeah. necessary. You wanted to say bold, didn't you? I did. Yeah. I did. Sorry. And then probably what I think is going to be the most intriguing series of the first round, East or West, the Islanders versus the Penguins. I like the Islanders here in seven. It's possible. I could see it. So then in the second round, we have Tampa Bay versus Toronto. Now, I believe if that, that famous audio clip where it's Toronto's done, see you later, Maple Leafs, I like that. I like that a lot. I don't know if you know what I'm referring to or you've heard that. I'm sure somebody listening to this podcast does. I think that's what's exact because that was in relation to a Tampa Bay game. I believe this is going to go that way. Tampa Bay will win in, let's go six, but I don't really think it's going to be a close series. And then in the Washington Capitals versus New York Islanders, I have in the second round, I like the Capitals as well. I think the experience takes them. They're Stanley Cup champions, and I think they're going to make the Eastern Conference Final. Okay, so you have the same. So three out of four of our uh, of our conference finals ones are the same. Yep. Got it. Nice to have some kind of... You know, at least with just one difference. So who do you have making the Stanley Cup final? Let me do the East first, and I'll do the West this time. In the Eastern Conference, I have Tampa Bay getting to the to the Stanley Cup final to take on, because we got the all-Canadian matchup over in the West, T- 
taking on the Winnipeg Jets, getting to the Stanley Cup final for the first time. I think in in their in their current iteration for sure, but I don't remember. Did the yeah? I'm pretty sure Winnipeg's never made a Stanley Cup final. So that would be a first. That would be a, that would keep the CBC guys happy. It would be kind of funny. I've got Winnipeg and Tampa Bay in the Stanley Cup final. Now, at this point, this is where you have a Southern U.S. team taking on a Canadian team, which back in the earlier 2000s was a tradition. You had Edmonton take a crack at it. You had Calgary take a crack at it. You had Ottawa take a crack at it. And I'm trying to think, was there another one? So Vancouver had a shot at that too. How could we forget the riots, Carlos? Of course. Of course. But yeah, you had multiple tries. And a lot of those, I think most of those, I know Tampa won one of those for sure. And I know Carolina won one of those. And um, trying to think who else. Because it was mostly Southern teams. That's what made me laugh about a lot of that. So, yeah. So, in this case, it would be Winnipeg and Tampa Bay. And Tampa Bay does have a Stanley Cup win over one of these. Do you want to tell me who, who your Stanley Cup winner is? And then I'll tell you mine here. Okay. So, I have, between the two, I also have Winnipeg making the final. And I have, I'm going with the upset. I'm going with Washington to beat Carolina. Now, uh, sorry, not, I already said that. Washington to beat Tampa Bay. There's just, I, for whatever reason, there's just something that makes me feel like the, the Washington Capitals path to the conference final is going to be a little easier. And I think they're going to be a little bit more rested. So I think that's going to give them the edge. So I have a Winnipeg-Washington Capitals final. And I'm saying it, Carlos, the Stanley Cup is coming north of the border. The Winnipeg Jets are going to win the Stanley Cup. So now that I've said that, when they don't win, listeners, feel free feel free to mock me as much as you want. You're no fun at all. Do you see what it says on the screen there? Oh, I see what you've put there, Carlos. And for the record, Carlos and I did not talk about this before. This is the first time we've actually talked and gone through the bracket. And Carlos as well has the Winnipeg Jets winning the Stanley Cup. Proving that, as we say in the beginning of every podcast, we are idiots. Yep. Burn it down. Whatever you do, burn it down. That's probably 100 to 1. But I did put down J-E-T-S because somebody who's called the Jets needs to win something. So I'm giving it. Uh, I've given it to the, to the Canadian team, which, again, would make, the, uh, would make the locals. But it would be appropriate in some ways. I think uh, it would be very poetic if the team that has never been to a Stanley Cup Finals that only got their team back in the last couple of years and – that is in Winnipeg of all places is the one who actually wins the Stanley Cup for the first time since 1993. Yeah, like That's historically funny, I think. And then being I the do president's too. trophy team with the 62 wins. Yes, you know, then they would be the first team to have that number of wins to not win the Stanley Cup. Yeah, but we did give them, uh, but we did give them an appearance there. Uh, you, I think you had them in the Western, in the Eastern Conference Final, and I had them in the Stanley Cup Final. So at least if they have, uh, so at least if they have a um, a good performance. That's not bad. No, not at all. And that's really all you can shoot for is uh, it's not an automatic. It's not a given. You have to win four rounds. It's a lot of wins. But that's what we've got for the NHL playoffs. Anything else uh, caught your eye? Yeah, no, I think we're I think we're uh, good in that terms. I think we've covered what we want to cover, which is good. And as you say, the CRTC will be happy with us because we have fulfilled our hockey quota. I will say this. Just for the record, the last time a Winnipeg team was in the Stanley Cup final was 1908, and they did not win. They lost to the Montreal Wanderers. Damn. This isn't even one of those like uh, the Ottawa Silver 7 where you go back to the pre-NHL days and they at least have a random Stanley Cup win. Not even one of those deals. Right. So when they were still being known as the Challenge Cup era as they were. so Yeah, that would be a first. That would be a first for Winnipeg. It'd be huge for them. And I, and I look forward to the Vancouver riots if that comes to pass. Very well. Sounds good. All right. So I think that leaves us with, and there's a, there should be some good ones this time around. Let's talk about what we're actually looking forward to this week. What do you- All right. And I, I have a few things. So I'm going to say aside from NHL playoffs because we've already talked about that. So first thing is the Raptors. The Raptors playoffs start tomorrow. So that's Saturday, right? And the Raptors are playing the Orlando Magic in the first round. So game one is 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Saturday. Uh, and so I'll be looking forward to that. And as well as some of the other NBA playoffs. Uh, there's not the other series that I'm particularly going to be tuning into. Because I'm not a huge basketball fan. But I do enjoy the Raptors. And I do enjoy the playoffs. So I will catch as much of that as I can. 
so we will have potentially, depending on how our week goes, two or three matchups before we record another podcast. In, in So there'll be two or three matchups in that series. Uh, the other thing I'm looking forward to is on the pretentious cross-country running side. So the Champions League and the Europa League go into the second leg of the quarterfinals this week. My favorite team in the world, Arsenal, has a 2-0 advantage going into the second leg, uh, playing away in Napoli. And Arsenal has a dreadful away record. Right, Their home form is off the charts, and their away record is not good. So we'll see what happens there. They're in pole position to take it, but based on the way they've played, eh. However, the fact that they didn't give Napoli an away goal, because, you know, away goals count more, right? If it's tied, the first tiebreaker is away goals. And those are, I would say, I'll just leave it at that. But to be honest, the thing I'm looking forward to most is the basketball. So for myself, it really comes down to there's going to be a lot of hockey on the TV, I would say. Really, it's uh, it's a lot of the matchups. There's going to be a lot of hockey coming in. I am going to watch a fair bit of, uh, you know, it is still early Major League Baseball season. One thing that is going to be kind of worth keeping an eye out on, it's it's a notorious thing. We did talk about it in our season preview, but Chris Davis hasn't had a hit yet. Yeah, and remember how I predicted that he was going to have a worse batting average than the 168 he had last year. So, so far that prediction is looking pretty good, question, which I feel bad for Chris Davis as a result. You know, The, the reality, though, is what's going to be a question is if he keeps having these problems, how long until they just send him down to the minors to figure it out? Because there's – at this point, there's something wrong with his swing, and it's going to get in his head because uh, you can't go that you can't go that long being hitless and being mocked everywhere you're going and not have it affect you psychologically. No, oh, and the social media is hitting it up too, right? The memes and I mean, I saw a thing where they were t- uh, it was an ad on a bus. So it was an ad for the Orioles, and he was the player on the bus, and they're saying, "Well, this bus is never going to get in an accident." Because he doesn't have a hit, so it's like this bus will never get a hit. You know, stuff like that. I mean, that's if you're seeing that as a player. It's not like the guy's not trying. So it's it's really got to eat at him. It's pretty vicious uh, the way that's worked out. It's going to be very interesting to see kind of how that plays out. It's going to be a lot of that. Um, it's quiet and it's not because we got we got hockey playoffs, which always takes a lot of precedence, and there's a lot of games, especially in the early rounds. So that's always really good hockey. That's pretty good. And then, of course, you got baseball is now back in play, back in session. So we've got that. And then, as to your point, there's going to be some NBA playoffs as well. So I'm going to try to squeeze a little bit in there where I can. What it's really going to come down to is how much of my TV is going to be occupied by hockey games. I don't know if I can get a multi-screen thing going on, but I'm going to try. We'll, we'll see if we can manage that one. I feel that if you try, you will succeed, Carlos. That was motivational, Dave. I really, I really... <laughs> Hey, you know what? It's really not that hard to get the multi-screen life going. Yeah, it's true. Nope, that's good. So I think uh, that will conclude us until the next time Antonio Brown tweets or – messages someone on Instagram. Hopefully, like I said, we'll he'll feud with us and then you can find out how great we are. I'm down for it, man. I'm down for it. Excellent. So I've already done the shameless plug. So hopefully, again, I'll remind you just one last time before we go. You can catch us on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, Google Play or wherever you get your podcasts. Check out the uh, check out the YouTube page though. Unnecessary Nonsense Podcast. We do make videos on there from time to time. At some point, I'm going to rope Dave into a channel trailer where I'll probably just berate him and make fun of him or throw poutine at him or something. Whatever works. Or maybe I'll just eat poutine while you talk. Who knows? That, that that would be on brand. That might work. But we'll come up with something on there, and it's a nice way of us just supplementing what's on the podcast. Because if something interesting does happen, obviously this week I was a little bit too busy up for it. But normally speaking, something like the Magic Johnson press conference, I would have been on there making fun of it, as I do. As, as you should. The Lakers, what I'll tell you, this isn't what I'm looking forward to for this week specifically. But I will tell you what I'm looking forward to in general terms is – I really want to see what happens with the LA Lakers because that is a disaster that it is a train wreck that you can't look away from because in the long run, they're going to have to figure something out and how, what, what, what the nature of that is going to be and how that's going to look like is really going to have impact on kind on the, probably the fate of LeBron James and other, other related players going forward where everybody ends up is really going to be the question. And that means this off season for the NBA is probably going to be as explosive as several in, in history, because there's a lot of players out there that could potentially go anywhere and somebody has got to be the first domino to fall. So that's going to yeah, be, no, for sure. Definitely something to watch for. Absolutely. So that'll be it for Dave and myself. Thanks for listening. And we will catch you on the next episode of the unnecessary nonsense podcast.